In today's note, we are going to be looking at different ways of sampling or sampling techniques. So sampling is going to be done when you need to collect data and in most cases that data can be collected um, through a survey. So a survey is a method of collecting information about a or about a population. So about the overall group that you're looking at. Right, so it could be the population of the school or all the students. It could be of the entire town, the province, the country, um, whatever the case may be. A census collects information about each individual. So there is a census that the Canadian government sends around that, uh, that you're required um, I believe by law to fill out and basically it's just gathering information or data um, about um, yourself and anyone in the household. So again, the government's just collecting data about its citizens. A sample is a group of individuals, individuals or you could say items that are taken from a population. Right, so the sample is a smaller group of the population. Um, a census collects information about everyone in the population. So again, as we mentioned, it's collecting information about everyone. And in general, bias occurs when the results of a survey do not reflect the population. So a census would be considered unbiased because it's collecting information about each individual and about every, it's collecting information about everyone in the population. Um, although, I guess, depending on who they survey or who, the sense, or who they go out to, um, it could actually be biased because it may not reflect it. Depending on your sample or how you sample, that could add bias as well. And there are different types of sampling that you can do when surveying a population, and we're going to look through a couple of them. So simple random, a simple simple random sample is everyone has an equal equal chance of being selected. So for example, if I put every student's name into a hat, and randomly picked a name, that would be a simple random sample. Everyone has an equal chance. Or you could think of like a ping pong ball. Um, if any of you watched sports, um, when they did the lottery or the second lottery draft this year um, uh, with the eight teams that lost in the first round of the playoffs, everyone had an equal chance because there's only one ball per team. Stratified random sample is done where you break into groups. So you break the population into groups and then random sample. So random sample from each group. So you're basically taking a um, you're breaking up your population into groups, and then you're taking a random sample from each group. But the key thing is each sample is proportional. So basically, if there were a, say, if, say we were doing this for students in high school, we would break it up by grade and if there were more grade nines, we would random sample more grade nines from that group. We still uh, sample or select students from grade 10, 11, and 12, but it's, each sample is proportional. So if you have a higher overall number of grade nines, you would sample more grade nines. If you had less grade 12s, you would sample less grade 12s. So the sample you're taking is proportional to the o their overall numbers. A voluntary response uh, is kind of quite simple, comes from the name. People volunteer to answer. So this could be something like uh, 
if you've ever bought something and the cashier says, oh, you have a, um, there's a survey to fill out um, and they circle it at the bottom of the receipt, that's a volunteer uh, volunteer response, right? People volunteer to answer those questions. They, they are not required to, no one's forcing them to. Um, it's up to them if they choose to or not. Cluster. Cluster is similar to stratified because you are breaking up into groups. So you break into groups. However, here, what you then do is then ask all individuals in a random group. So this would be where I break all the students up by grade and select only the grade nines. Because right? that would be, I've broken them, them up into groups and I'm asking all the students or all the individuals in one of those groups. Convenience. Convenience is to sample where individuals are easily accessible. So this may be something where if I want to learn or sample about sports interests, I may go to a sports store um, and uh, survey all the customers or if I was say um, a hockey team and I wanted to survey individuals about um, the team or what to do then I would survey all the people at the game uh, because I know everyone there is going to have some sort of knowledge um, and they're going to be easily accessible in terms of what I want to study. Systematic. Systematic is a very um, kind of formal or you could say very structured way of doing it and it's every nth person is selected. And so this may be um, you order you order or you line up these students by name and you select every fifth student to be part of your sample. Or you line you just go through and you, you have it um, by age and you select every 10th student. Basically you're selecting every nth or every certain position. So every first, or not at first, every second student. So it'll be the second one, then you skip and then go through. So those are just some examples of the different types of sampling. Um, we're just gonna go through and look at a couple of examples and see if we can try to identify what type of sample it is. So a high school vice principal enters the cafeteria and randomly selects two tables. All students at those tables are surveyed. So what is the population? Well, the population or who we're looking at is going to be high school or high school students. We're taking a sample from the school, so it's, un it's reasonable to believe that the population would be um, the high school students or high school students in general. The sample, so who are we actually asking? The sample are going to be the two tables of students. The type of sampling. So the type of sampling that's occurring here, we're breaking them up into groups because they're broken up by tables and we're selecting two of those tables. So the type of sampling that relates to is cluster sampling because we've broken them up into groups this time we've broken them up based on table and we've selected all members of those groups which is cluster is there bias in this survey so will this survey accurately represent the population it won't represent the population or it could not so yes there is bias and this could be Maybe there's only one grade at a table. And usually you could see that tables are separated by grade. Um, students tend to sit with other students in the same grade. So you're only asking students from one grade or you could potentially be doing that. 
so that yes there is bias or there could be bias second students from my math class are given a survey assignment Matt goes home and surveys his immediate family the population the population of this would be students and families in my class because again the only ones I'm asking um, are just students in my class and they're going home to ask their family the sample the sample in this case would be Matt's family because that is who he is asking and the type of sampling this one would be convenience this one's convenience because Matt doesn't really have to do much work he's going to ask the easiest uh, sample that he can find and that that would be people that he talks to um, or sees regularly is there bias in this survey yes there is bias one because depending on what we're asking we're only asking Matt's family or Matt's only asking his family so they could be biased based on their answers maybe they want to give him um, good answers so they f they f change their answers or they fake it and another thing too is depending on who we're asking or what we're asking Matt's family may not be that very large it may be him and his parents or guardians and there may be one or two siblings so the key thing is is that there's a small sample right if you're only asking five people and then basing your results off of five answers that's not a very accurate accurate survey and there would be some bias there because you would tend that you tend to think that everyone in that family may have the same point of view not always the case um, but either way yes there would be bias the third one 10 percent of the school is surveyed in proportion to the number of students in each grade there are 300 grade nines 350 grade tens 270 grade 11s and 330 grade 12s so what's the population or what's the overall group that we're looking at it would be high school students again the sample the sample that we're looking at is 10 percent of the school the type of sampling so here is a type of sampling where we're breaking it up by groups or putting them into groups in this case we're putting them in it together by grade but we're taking only a select few right we're taking 10 percent of the school in proportion to the number of students in each grade so we're taking 10 percent of the school but we're basing it off of the proportions that are grouped up by right so because there's more grade 10s we're going to be asking more grade 10s or that 10 percent is going to be made up more of grade 10s then grade 12s then grade 9s and then grade 11s so the type of sampling here is stratified because stratified was again you're breaking them up by groups and you're selecting a proportion of or you're selecting a sample from each group based on its overall proportion is there bias in this survey overall I would say no there is no bias because you're taking a proportion of each group you're you're representing everyone if there's more of a certain group you're making sure that they have a larger representation you could say there is some bias based on the fact that you're only asking 10 percent but overall is there bias in this survey I would say no everyone or each slash each grade is you say fairly represented so those are some examples of that type um, here the next thing is basically we just have a table of looking at all the different types of sampling techniques um, overall description so it gives an example of each type a little bit of how it might be determined um, as well as some pros and cons for these types of sampling um, they all have their pros and cons 
Um, they may be good for some situations, not good for others. Um, but again, it all depends on what you're looking at and how accurate you want your data to be. Right? So again, the key things are just knowing the different types of sampling um, and just trying to be able to recognize or understand what they are and how they, how they work. Mm -hmm.